The Ontario Human Rights Commission has recently called for an end to sexualized dress codes, but the subject of workplace attire and your rights continues to be a very hot topic. Natalie McDonald is an employment lawyer with the law firm of Redner McDonald. She's here to tell us what you need to know about what you wear to work. And it's great to have you here on this. Thank you very much, Marcy. It's great to be here. So tell me about the Human Rights Commission and why they're putting a spotlight on this right now. Well, I believe that the Ontario Human Rights Commission was responding to the rash of media incidents that had been reported where employers were forcing women to dress in a certain sexualized manner in an effort to attract clients. And in particular, there were issues where women were being asked to wear bikini tops being asked to change their hairstyle, being asked to wear lycra dresses, and the Ontario Human Rights Commission came out with its position on International Women's Day, I might add, to say emphatically that employers cannot do this. It is discriminatory. Employers, though, do have the right to institute a dress code. They absolutely do, Marcy. You're 100% right on that. But the fact is they must introduce the dress code without any discriminatory effects. And to do so, for example, would be to offer options to employees. So take, for example, restaurants where, in fact, you know, the um, servers would be required to wear white and black, white tops, black bottoms. Why not offer a range, a choice of short sleeve shirts, long sleeve shirts, short skirts for black, for the black bottoms or long skirts or pants, just so that you're offering employees a choice in the matter and you're not dictating to them. And it shouldn't differ between men and women. If there's a dress code, there's a dress code. Absolutely. That's exactly the point. And so it needs to be inclusive to ensure that not only is it um, non-discriminatory for women, but also for people of trans, trans people or of diverse genders so that it's always inclusive and that there are no barriers or discrimination effects as a result. Is the type of workplace taken into consideration? For example, a law firm versus a bar? Well, absolutely. I, I think, I mean, I think the types of situations that we're seeing are more more in line with bars and restaurants because let's face it particularly as the weather warms up we know that you know employers some employers are going to be asking employees to wear uh, scantily clad uniforms to attract the clientele that's not typically the case in a law firm or a private institution like that but it does happen in bars and restaurants Given that 22% of Canadians actually have their first job in restaurants, it's an issue of national importance. So it's about setting parameters, right? It, it is about setting parameters, absolutely. And it's important that, you know, I, I think employees need to understand their rights and entitlements and they, they need to know, particularly young women, that they do not have to dress that way. That is not something they have to be subjected to. And if they do, they have rights. They can go to the Ontario Human Rights Commission and the tribunal, and they can even form class actions. And don't think we're not going to see a class action if an employer tries to institute this kind of discriminatory policy. And as you briefly touched on at the outset of this interview, this goes beyond wardrobe. This is appearance because a woman was told her box break uh, yes. weren't professional or didn't work and was told to fix her hair in a retail situation. That's one of the, the cases that have, that have come up. Absolutely. And I mean, that takes us back, Marcy, to the days of Mad Men. Donald Draper, Roger Sterling. I mean, this is what we're, we're seeing at the moment. And fortunately, Ontario, as the province, is leading the way on this and saying it's not okay to dictate what women wear, particularly if it's for, to attract clientele and dress in a sexualized manner. So we are seeing it in all realms. Thank you so much for being here, Natalie. Thank Good you, Marcy. A pleasure.